So, Father, we thank you. Lord, this morning, as we go to the Word, we receive that anointing that flows from the Spirit of God that is within us, that teaches us all things and leads us and guides us into all truth. We believe for that anointing to open up our eyes, to give us revelation, and to release such grace that we will walk in the truths that you will speak to us today. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's have a seat. Thanks. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless His name. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Galatians chapter 1. We run the series Profile of the Righteous. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 15, Paul says, When it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me and that I might preach him among the heathen. So God separated you from your mother's womb for this purpose, to reveal his son in you. Amen? Amen. To reveal Jesus, the son of God, raised in power by the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection of the dead, Jesus that is alive today at the Father's right hand, God, when he separated you from his mother's womb, it was to, for this purpose to reveal and to unveil Jesus Christ in you. In Colossians 2 verse 12 it says, you were, you were buried, you and I were buried with Christ by baptism. And you were raised with Christ by the faith of the operation of God. Because of that operation of God, here you are today. And the reality of who you are today, the essence of who you are today, is Galatians 2.20. You are, were, crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, you live, but it's not you. It is Christ that liveth in you, and you live by the faith of the Son of God. The essence of, 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 of all of this operation of God and, is that you are, it is now Christ living in you. You are the perfect product of the perfect sacrifice of Christ. Ephesians calls it your, God's workmanship, God's handiwork. Now today we want to move towards the conclusion of this message. Living, the conclusion of this message, Profile of the Righteous, and I'm going to focus on this aspect. Living in the name, life, and promises of Christ. Amen? Now, the Lord has given me some truth that he wants me to declare and to proclaim. And I'm going to read something that I believe the Lord has impressed on me that I should read ex just as it is. But I want to encourage you to, to be very attentive. Maybe you hear better with your eyes closed. Maybe you hear better by looking at me, whichever it is. But be very attentive. And I'm trusting that the Lord, by his anointing, will anoint your ears to hear as a disciple. And will anoint your heart to understand. Amen? So set your antennas out there. Now the new man, and this is 
This is like a, 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 a composite. This is like a picture of, 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 of where you are, who you are, and, 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 and what has been done. The new man on the inside of you, which is the real you, has no history. All things are indeed passed away. However, this new man on the inside of you knows where he came from. He was born not of the will of man, but he was born by the very will of God. He was born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. He was not born of a human seed. The word and the glory of God is the very essence of his life. He has a new bloodline. He has no human definitions of race and gender, culture, earthly language or human genes. And he has a different mindset to the old, unrenewed, natural mind of man. He has the very mind of Christ. And he is, he is totally, and that's you on the inside, that's the real you. He is totally, completely surrendered and abandoned to the taught life of God. He thinks like God. He lives every moment. In the authority of the name of Jesus. He lives by the faith of Christ. And he sees everything in life from where he is. He sees everything in, in life through the sacrifice of Christ. That's why all things have become new. He sees every person through the blood of Christ. He recognizes that all men, all men are in need of of resurrection life and the life of God. And actually all men are in search of resurrection life and the life of God. Most of them may not know it. He recognizes that resurrection life is God's divine ordained purpose for every human being from the foundation of the world. And this new man sees himself therefore as God's ambassador to reach that person, to reach that life, and to bring them to the destiny of resurrection life. There's your assignment. The new man knows that he is God's minister of reconciliation. He is seated in heavenly places in Christ. He is above only and not beneath. The name of Jesus the life of Christ and the great and precious promises are the very means by which he is designed to fulfill his purpose and to expand the kingdom of God and manifest God's divine nature. So today the focus is going to be talking about living in the name, life, and the promises of Christ. Amen? Amen? Let's turn to Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Now, I believe you have this memorized. <laughs> I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. What is this all about? This verse is saying that death, your crucifixion with Christ. Now notice I'm shifting not just from Jesus' crucifixion, but your crucifixion. You are crucified with Christ. Your crucifixion with Christ ended what you used to do. Say do. Now we are heading into a place, and that is not only knowing what God has done for you and who you are, but allowing him to do through you what he desires. What he wants to do with you and through you. So death and your crucifixion with Christ put an end to what you do. 
And your resurrection life, you being resurrected with Christ, begins what he does. The life, the, the, the life you, the way you know, knew it has come to an end. It's over. It's done. Now it is his life. The life you now live, say now live. It is the life of Christ. Now this is part of the awakening to righteousness that Paul cried out for by the Spirit of God in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, 34. That you would awake to this oneness. That you would awake to this reality of this life. And, and stop living a life that is separated from him. Stop coming short of the glory. Amen? The mystery that was hid from generations is what? It's Christ in you. The great mystery of the gospel is Jesus himself living through you. Where you are now his body amen so galatians 1 15 and 16 paul was saying that when god separated you when he separated me from my mother's womb it was for this purpose it was to reveal his son in you and that you might preach him that you might declare him that you might preach him well i thought paul was supposed to preach the gospel but paul says it was to preach what christ in him so the gospel is the revelation of Christ in you. That's the mystery. The gospel is Christ in you. You are the body of Christ. The body that Jesus had when he walked the shores of Galilee is not here anymore. You are the body that he has. Jesus has purchased you for yourself, for himself. Your life is now to be God's life. It's to be God's life in action. Why? Why? Because he lives inside of you. He lives there. And he's purchased you. Amen? That is the soberness about this message. And that is the sober aspect of this life. It is, thank God for the joy of the Lord. Thank God for all the promises. Thank God for all the blessings. But the reality is, God wants you. Not just to be in their army. <laughs> God wants you for him to live, for him to live and express himself through you. For you to be the fragrance of him in every place. For you to be the very evidence and proof of, his, of Jesus' resurrection. Amen? God wants to live his life in you and through you. That's the bottom line. Now in Galatians 2 verse 21, while we're still here, it says after verse 20, verse 21, don't, we do not frustrate the grace of God. Don't frustrate the grace of God. Because if righteousness came by the law, by works, or by performance, then Christ died in vain. And that verse just referred to verse 20 as righteousness. That verse just called it not being you, you being crucified, but it not being the life of Christ living in you, it describes that as righteousness. Well, that ought not to be a surprise because one of, the, one of the main aspects and comprehension of righteousness is the fact that you are one with him. And it is now his life. The life that is in the vine is what's coming out, is what's flowing in the branch. Are you with me? Say, I am his body. He is to live his life in me. This is the reality of righteousness. So you see, the thing is, we are to have, we are to have even a greater pursuit of this righteousness and this oneness more than we had yesterday or last week. We are to be ever increasing in this pursuit of righteousness, this pursuit of the manifestation of his life and functioning in that life. Jesus says, seek first, pursue the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 says the same thing. Follow after righteousness. Isaiah 51, verse 1 says, You that are pursuing righteousness, it says, Look to the rock out of which you've been carved out. That rock is Christ. In other words, if you are pursuing righteousness, you need to look and have your mind and your eyes fixed on his life because that's now your life. And that is the life that is to be manifested and flow through you. The Bible says your spirit is what? Life because of what? Righteousness. 
Romans 8 verse 10. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So in resurrection and ascension, what has happened? You have been given the very name of Jesus so that you can effectively function in that life. Amen? That name of Jesus is part of your inheritance. It says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, that, that um, you, were you were born again, you were begotten of God unto a lively hope by the resurrection of the dead unto an inheritance that is incorruptible, that is undefiled, that faded not away. The name of Jesus is part of that inheritance. The name of Jesus belongs to you. And that name of Jesus... And I know we talk about many things in the name of Jesus, particularly in the area of buying the enemy and casting out devils and demons, which, of course, is applicable. Amen? But I want us to focus on the name of Jesus as a very means to live the life and to function in the life of Christ. Amen? It's been given for that purpose. So that you and I could function more effectively in the very life of Christ that is on the inside of us and in the kingdom of God. Jesus rules the kingdom of God. The name of Jesus is law in the kingdom of God. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Turn with me to John chapter 20. Praise the name of the Lord. <clears throat> John chapter 20. Glory to God. All right, verse 31. It says, These things have I, but these are written that you would believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. That you would believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Well, what happens when you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? 1 John 5, 5 says, Who is he that overcometh? Who is he? Who is he that is overcometh? And the one that overcometh is granted to sit with Jesus at the Father's right hand. Well, who is he? 1 John 5, 5 says, He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen? He that believed that Jesus is the Son of God, and the Son of God that by the resurrection was declared to be the Son of God with power. So, who is he? So, who? These things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing, believing this about Jesus, he is the Son of God with power, rules, has absolute authority, that believing you might have life through his name. Well, what's, what's, this, what's this switching thing here? What is this? Here, here, here is what's important. The Bible says in, in Matthew 28 and verse 18. You know how it says in Matthew 18? Let me just quote it from verse 18. Verse 19. If two of you shall agree in earth as what? Touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Right? Verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. You know that verse? Well, let's repeat that verse. And let's, let's cut it up. Let's divide it. If two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. In my name, there I am. Where is he? In my name, there I am. Jesus and his name are one. Everything that Jesus is and has and all his power, all of his authority, all of his awesomeness, all of it is one with that name. When Jesus, when it says in Matthew 28 verse 18, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me, that's all in the name. When, G, when it says in Revelations 1 verse 18, I, Jesus says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I have the keys of hell and of death. All of that power is in that name. His name is as powerful and as victorious and as awesome as Jesus himself is awesome, victorious, and full of power. 
And you and I must not separate the name from the person. When you speak the name, you are evoking, you are declaring the very person of Christ. So, in that name, so that name, you live by that name. The Bible says whatever you do, you are to do in that name. How powerful, how awesome, how majestic is that name? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, if we can read that, let's flip there and, and look at it. Hebrews chapter 1. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. When did he do that? When did he obtain this more excellent name? Before he went to the cross? On the cross? Or was it after he was raised from the dead? Is it as he is now? Being made so much better than the angels, he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name. Let's just stop right there. Are you a joint heir with Christ? Are you an heir of God? Are you a joint heir to anything that Jesus has inherited? So if Jesus has inherited this awesome, more excellent name, and you are a joint heir with him, then that name, you are heir of that name, that name belongs to you. That's why he says, go in my name. Be made so much better than the angels he had by inheritance, obtain a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said God at any time, You are my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, Let all the angels of God worship him. Well, I, I, I thought you're not supposed to worship anyone else but God. God said, you shall have no other gods before me, and you should not worship any other woman. But God said, worship the Son. That means God says Jesus is God. Hallelujah. And I, there is a man, there is a man that is part of the Godhead today. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You've got representation in the Godhead. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And again, when he bring it in the first begotten into the world, he said, Let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he said, Who make it his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he said, Your throne, O God. God called Jesus God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thy throne, O God, is forever and forever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. The Son of God that he's talking to here, his name. The name, the Son of God, the name, Jesus, is most excellent. The Philippians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11 says, It is a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and earth and things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess, He is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It is because of the power and the authority of the name which is equivalent to the very person of Christ. That is the reason why you, are, you and I are told to cast out devils. That is the reason why when we pray, we are not trusting in our own merit. We are not trusting in our own works. But it says in John 15 verse 16, I have not chosen you, or rather you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and I have ordained you that you would go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit would remain. And whatever you shall ask in my name, he'll give it to you. Our prayer is presenting the person of Christ. His power, his authority, his perfection, his holiness. And in him, all the promises are yes and amen. In him, it is granted. Are you with me? You might not qualify in yourself. But you don't need to. You are in him. And he's totally qualified. He's qualified. Amen? When we pray, we pray in that name. We exercise authority in that name. John chapter 14, verse 12 to 14 says, Jesus says, He that believeth in me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works shall he do, because I've gone to the Father. And I've given you my name. You have my authority. I'm going to watch over my word to perform it. You declare in my name, and I'll back you up. This is what Jesus said. I've given you that authority. I've given you that power of attorney, of attorney. So you and I, this name is awesome. 
But we are to live in this name. We are to do everything in this name. We are to command and decree in this name. We are to use this name more than we've used it. We've been using it yesterdays. You are to command your conflict. The conflicts that come up in the name of Jesus. Talk to the conflict. Speak to your body. Command it to obey the word of God. In Jesus' name. Foot, I command you. Obey the word of God that says you're healed and well. In Jesus' name. Learn to talk. Speak to the environment. There are times sometimes we'd come in here in the morning. We, I mean, your, your wishes weren't so, but sometimes we might come in here on a Sunday morning early and we sense the atmosphere isn't right. And even if you didn't sense it right, we do it anyway. We do what? Declare the authority of the name. Declare the authority of the sacrifice. Declare the power of the kingdom. Release the glory of God so that devils and demons have no authority in here. They could visit because sometimes they come with folks. Amen? Hello? Jesus had a few of them at his table. Amen? But that's all right. They can have a seat, but they're not allowed to talk. They're not allowed to affect the atmosphere. They're, they have no rule, no authority here. Why? Because we have the authority of the name of Jesus, and we declare it. We order the environment by the life of Christ that is in us, by the name of Jesus. First, turn me to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Say, I have life through that name. Colossians chapter 3 verse, let's pick it up in verse 14. And above all these things, put on charity, put on love. It is the bond of perfectness. Let the peace of God the reality of everything being joined and set, set to its original intent. Set at one again. Let that truth so permeate your thinking. Let it rule in your heart. Hallelujah. To the which also you are called in one body and be thankful. Let You know something? Here's the thing. Let me show you something here for a moment. Your spirit man does not judge by how it feels, by how he's affected, by the appearances. None of those things, he don't make decisions. Those things don't mean nothing to him. He only judges, perceives from the mind of God, from the word of God, from the blood of Jesus, from the spirit of Christ, upon authorities what's finished. And it's because of that that he can always count to joy. Amen? It is because of that he can always be thankful, always rejoice, always be engaged with God, never be anxious about anything, because no matter what he faces, he knows the reality of Jesus, the Son of God, with power that has reconciled everything, that has set at one everything, so that everything is subject to him and that life that is in him. Are you with me? So let the peace of God rule in your heart to the which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and, make it, and singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do, say whatsoever. Whatsoever you do in word. Or indeed, do all in the name of Jesus. Does it really mean all? Or is this only when you got to bind the devil? Or is it only when you eat? You ought to eat in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen? Do all. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And if I could jump down to verse 23, and whatever you do, do it. From your heart, heartily, as unto the Lord, not as unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. Knowing 
that all the time when you're doing whatever you do and you're doing it whether it be word or deed and whatever it is you're doing it in the name in the person of Christ in that authority and you're doing it from your heart to the Lord you know that as you're doing that what's happening you are drawing in the inheritance you are making withdrawals and the inheritance is coming to you because you serve the living God hallelujah now, if you're going to do whatever you do in the name of Jesus, then the ordinary, simple, little things, if you're going to do it in the name of Jesus, will become supernatural. You can do dishes in the name of Jesus, and an ordinary task has now taken on supernatural um, proportions. I challenge you, I double, that's, that's not, that's not, too, that's not too, too, too spiritual. So I double challenge you. How is that? <laughs> I challenge you over the course of this week, whatever you do, do it in the name of Jesus. Whether it's dishes, whether you're gardening, whether you go to sleep, say, I go to sleep in the name of Jesus. See, if you're studying, I do it in the name of Jesus. If you're driving, I do it in the name of Jesus. Making a phone call, I do it in the name of Jesus. If you're in a place where you can do so audibly, do it audibly. If you're in a place where it might not be too wise, because they'll think you're strange, right? Then do it in your heart. But develop it, develop it, and watch what happens. Mix it with faith. Know that you're dealing with the very person of Christ. You see, if you don't mix it with faith, and you don't recognize that this name and Jesus are one, you just might be in a place where you're using the name of God or Jesus in vain. You're using the name in a manner where it's void of power, not mixing it with faith. It was faith in this name that gave the man this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Acts chapter 3 verse 16. Mix the faith, mix the name with faith, mix the name with the reality that this is the person of Christ. That I am projecting into the situation, in, 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 so to speak. Amen? Don't separate the name from the person of Christ. And one other thing. Speak from the life. That life that is in you. That life of Christ that is in you. What do you mean? How am I going to speak from the life of Christ that is in me? How am I going to do that? Well, here's a clue. Here's a clue. Your spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. That life is because of that oneness. Isn't that right? That's why you have that life. It's because of righteousness, because of that oneness. Um, Romans 8 verse 10. So then, if you function in, 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 in righteousness, if you're speaking from righteousness, you'll be speaking from that life. Now, that's easier to apply. Because to speak from righteousness, you got to speak from a place where you are in oneness with him. There is no separation. you got to speak from a place where you're free from condemnation and insecurity and inferiority. And you're free from shame and you're free from guilt. you got to speak from a place where you recognize authority. The authority and the power of righteousness. you got to speak from a place where you know you've got rights and privileges. Not because of what you have done, but because of what he has done. you got to speak from that place where you know the Father hears you. Amen? And if he would do it for Jesus, he'll do it for you. Because it's not, it's not you, but it's him in you through you. Are you with me? So you speak in authority of the name with faith. Not separating Jesus from the name. And you speak from the life, from where you are in him, from where you are at the Father's right hand, from that place of righteousness. Amen? From that place, from that life. Say from that life. Galatians 2.20 again. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but it's what? It is Christ that liveth in me. And the life, the life, say the life. The life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It is now the life of Christ that is living in you and is living through you. That's the whole emphasis here today. 1 John 4, 9 says, The love of God is manifested in this, that you might live through him. Which means what? That you might now have his life. Man, that's love. That's love. 
Here, take my life. <laughs> right? Give me your life. Give me that old, beat up <laughs> life. And here, take mine. And this is Jesus' life. 1 John 4, 17 says, Herein is the love of God made perfect. Here is the absolute perfect demonstration, illustration, manifestation of the love of God. That as he is, so are you in this world. As he is, so are you. You have his life. So that you can have boldness and confidence whenever you're in a jam, whenever you're on trial, in the day of judgment. Amen? Blessed be the name of the Lord. So it is the life of Christ living through you. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is what it was always about. This is what God intended from the foundation of the world. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ had redeemed us from the curse, sin, and separation. That's the essence of the curse, you know. <laughs> you don't want to live there. You don't want to live in separation. Hallelujah. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, because it's written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Why did he do that? That the blessing, the blessing of Abraham. Now I know there's some teachings about the blessing of the Lord that make it rich. Paul said in Philip in Romans chapter 15, verse, verse 29, that I know when I come, I'm sure when I show up, that I'm going to come in the fullness of the blessing. So there is application for that. But let's continue. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles to Jesus Christ. That we might receive what? I hear what it calls the blessing. The promise of the Spirit through faith. So Jesus became a curse. Why? That you would have the promise of the Spirit. The promise of the Spirit. The promise of the Spirit. That presence of God. That presence of Christ within you. Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says, If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is what? He's none of his. Are you his? Yeah. Well, you've got the Spirit of Christ. Yeah. Are you redeemed from the curse? Yeah. You've got the promise of the Spirit. Galatians 4 verse 6 says, Because you are sons of God, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son in your heart, crying out, Abba, Father, you are my daddy. Romans chapter 8 verse 16 says, His spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are children of God. So, here is what I'm, I, I, I want to say here. It is not your life anymore. It's his life. He's living his life through you. But you see, you got to identify that life so as to be able to function in it, which is where we're going. Which is where we're going in the very near future. Amen? We got to identify the life. And that life of Christ, the life of Christ, the witness of the Holy Spirit, the anointing that abided in you are inseparable. It is the life of Christ. Amen? You're inseparable. Ephesians 1 verse 13 says that you were sealed. Sealed. Bam. Sealed. Tie dyed. Wrapped up. Cannot be broken. You are sealed by the Holy Ghost after that you believed. Hebrews 13 verse 5 says he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Now if you believe that and God is not a liar and you're not going to make him a liar, then you never, ever, 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 ever talk, think, sing anything that says that in any way indicates he is not in you. He is not with you. You're not going to ask him to go with you. You're not going to talk like that and pray like that. You're going to declare, He is with me. He is in me. He never leaves me. He never forsakes me. I've been sealed by the Holy Ghost. I've got the witness of God on the inside of me. That I've been perfected and sanctified forever. You and I must not allow any separation in our thinking from the life of God and Christ that is in you. And sometimes we sing songs that exalt and 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 renew and oh. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? All right, okay. 
continually act like you're one with him. That's what I'm saying. Think. Talk. Don't deny him. Don't deny him. Don't act like he's not there. And definitely don't talk that way. Away to righteousness. Away to that oneness. And stop. Well, it, awake to righteousness and sin not. I always translate that as because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Awake to righteousness and stop coming short of the glory. Yeah. Amen? 1 Corinthians 15 verse, verse Psalm 34. All right. Hallelujah. So what should you do? This life. Say this life. It's in me. It's his life. Now here is, listen to these beautiful verses of scripture. Proverbs 3 verse 6 says, in all your ways, acknowledge, own up. Acknowledge who? Him. Him where? Yeah, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Where is he? Acknowledge him. Man, the communication of your faith become effective. You, begin, you will begin to immunize, immune, immunize yourself against deception. Acknowledge him. And what happened? All of a sudden, his guidance systems begin to become functional in your life. He will direct your paths. First Peter chapter 1 verse 13 says something to the extent that girt up the loins of your mind and hope for the grace that is going to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Meaning what? There is a grace that comes your way. That is made manifest at the revelation of Jesus. What does that mean? There is a grace, an empowerment that becomes evident as Christ in you is unveiled. It's a Christ in me. He lives here. This is his residence. Amen? And he's not moving out. Hallelujah. So that's why Colossians 3 will says, look here, your life is hid with Christ in God. Now that you've been risen with him, set your affections. Where? Above. You pursue righteousness? Look to the rock. Look to that life. And you see, the thing is, when you live in this reality and you begin to, 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 to operate this way and you begin to think this way and you begin to talk this way and you begin to acknowledge that life, what happens? you will become more sensitive to the leading of the Spirit of God. You will become more sensitive to the voice of God. You will become more sensitive to the little nudgings. How many times have you been in a, you're looking for a parking spot and you pass one and there's a prompting of the Holy Ghost, take that, and you don't. And next thing you know, man, you end up wrong the block. <laughs> you come back and the spot is gone. Have you ever had that happen? Amen? You can practice, and uh, that's where you practice. <laughs> but I'm saying that acknowledgement of his life in you will make you more sensitive and release his guidance system. Amen? Now let me give you four simple things by which you can develop that consciousness of Christ in you. The Bible says in Psalm 16 verse 8, it says, I have set the Lord at my right hand. I've said, no, no, that's not what it says. Back up. It says, I have set the Lord always before me. He's at my right hand. I shall not be moved. I have done it. What have I done? I've set the Lord always before me. I have done something with my consciousness. So as to develop this, this awareness that he's here. How do you do that? Number one, talk to him continually. Don't act like he's not there. Talk to him continually. You see when the Bible says in Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. What does it mean? Don't be engaged with the problem and, and be filled with anxiety and fear and worry. Worry. Say worry. No, you don't want to say worry. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, you know, I'll tell you something about worry. Right? Worry, and then you man don't, don't know nothing about worry. He don't worry. But you see, worry is being conformed to the way of the world. That's how the world, the world worry. Worry is confirmation to the world and it's denying of that peace 
and the fact that he said everything at once. Anyway, so be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Don't be engaged with the problem, but in everything. By what? Prayer. What does that mean? In everything. Be engaged with God. Be engaged with that life. Live in that reality. Live in that consciousness. Prayer without ceasing. Keep hooked up with that life. Amen? So the first thing about to develop that consciousness is learn to talk to him. Shall I take this parking spot? Or is there a better one? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> is there a closer one? Or maybe I'm looking for, maybe the Lord knows you need some exercise. <laughs> you need to wonder, you need a parking lot way up there. <laughs> so you could walk a little bit, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Amen? But talk to the Lord. Talk to the Spirit of God. Let it be part of, let, talk like he's there. Don't act like he's not there. Number two, locate and monitor where the Holy Spirit lives in you. Amen? If you don't know, close your eyes, pray in tongues, and just get a sense of where it's coming from. No, 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 not there. Koto lo mongo, no, not there. Koto lo mongo ndenga ndinga ndara ma kotoko shete keke bala. Ha, 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 right here. Between the third and the fourth button somewhere. Learn to recognize where he speaks, where he lives. Because when you know where he lives, you can monitor that spot. Are you with me? All right? I don't know if you live in an apartment and you have some neighbors on the next side of the wall and you put a cup on the wall, you might hear what's happening next door. <laughs> Are you with me? Well, put a cup here, man. Put a cup right where the Holy Ghost is. Monitor that spot. Are you with me? And then you're going you're gonna to start hearing stuff. Amen? Develop that awareness of knowing where he lives and learning to sometimes be quiet and listen, listen, like tune in right here. Develop it by practice. Amen? <laughs> Minding your own personal presence of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number three, pray a lot. Pray often in tongues. Pray casually. Pray intensely. Pray the, you know, you know, the, you know, you know the lazy tongue? Okay, all right, okay. Hey, the Bible says all man of prayer, okay? <laughs> so then there is the under your breath tongue but then there is a time all man of pray in tongues a lot amen all man of pray in tongues a lot amen amen that's one way to get rid of a lot pray in tongues a lot whatever you think my jokes are corny <laughs> alright number four practice speaking and ministering from the life of Christ that is in you. You go to lay hands on somebody, take some time and know that it's not you, but come from that place, that place where the life is, right here. Come from that place, righteous. You're righteous. No condemnation. It is not me, but it's him through me. Develop those things, all right? All right. Next point. Jesus does desire to manifest his life in you, in you and through you. You see, when the Word of God says in 1 John 4, 17, that as He is, so are we in this world, oh yes, it is revealing unto us just how Jesus is, righteous, holy, etc., etc., that's how I am. But I believe it is also saying, as Jesus is, that is how you are to be on this earth. Amen? You are to be as He is. How is He? Is he what does He want to do? What does He do? What has He done? Well, what He has done is what He's doing. He's healed, he's still healing. Amen. Amen? He restored, he's still restoring. Are you with me? All right. So, the, the, the enemy, but now, so we are talking about shifting into a place where it's not just what he's done for you, but it's what he's doing, and, and it's not just what he's doing in you. It is that, but it's what he's doing through you. Which is to say, you see, the, the, the devil was not able to do anything to stop God from raising you up by the power of resurrection. He wasn't able to do that. But he can stop the manifestation of the life of God through you. You know how he can do that? If he can get you to not cooperate 
and participate with our life. If he could get you to reject some of what I'm saying, if he could get you to live in strife, if he could get you to be in a place of ignorance, if he could get you to stay in unbelief, amen? If he could get you in some kind of bondage and captivity so that our life in you can't flow, but, uh, but thank God you have the Holy Ghost, you have the Word, you have the truth, you have the blood, you have grace. So we are able to overcome all of those things, Amen? So that what? So that you could be hooked up and that as he is, you would be able to be as he is and that his life might flow through you. What Jesus has finished in you, what Jesus has finished in you, he wants to manifest through you. Amen? Is healing done? But he wants to manifest that through you. Are you restored? Do you have liberty? Are you delivered? Well, he wants deliverance to flow through you. He wants you, he wants you to be his instrument of reconciliation, to restore people to God, to restore people to the good pathways. He has redeemed you. He wants to redeem through you. The Bible says he has made unto you wisdom, righteousness, sanctification. Wherever you are, the wisdom of God is present. And the more you think this way and talk this way, that's how it functions. It doesn't function just by you. It doesn't function if you are ignorant about it. Amen? The Bible says, you know, and I love this scripture in Luke. Okay. All right. Anyway, in Luke chapter 24, where Jesus said in 24 verse 44, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. Jesus says, while I was with you, I spoke certain things. The things that were spoken about me in the laws and in the prophet. And I didn't spoke them to you just so as to educate you. He says, I spoke them so that they might be fulfilled. I wasn't speaking them to say, oh, this is what... It, in other words, he was speaking it, but he understood that even though this was spoken concerning him in the laws, in the prophet, in the books of Moses, he had to take it, put it in his mouth, and he needed to speak it in order for it to have fulfillment. So if God has declared that he's healed you, if God has declared that he, this is what he wants to do through you, that you are to do the greater works, and if God has already spoken that over you, it's not going to be fulfilled unless you put it in your mouth and you start talking that way. Are you with me? That's why we got to say whatever he says. You know, part of, your, part of your purpose, other than expanding the kingdom of God, is to see what God has spoken concerning you to be fulfilled. And you've got a part in that. You've got a cooperation and a participation in the life of God and in the word of God in order for those things to be fulfilled. And the number one thing is acknowledge. Acknowledge. Say the same thing. That's confession. Saying the same thing that he says. Amen? Hallelujah. He wants to, so what, what was I saying? I was saying 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. That whenever you show up, wisdom shows up. Because Christ in you is wisdom. Whenever you show up, you know, sometimes, you, you know, I mean, you might have a situation in the workplace. And I mean, and our folks are conflicts, conflict, things are happening. You know what I mean? Well, you are the agent in that place to bring peace. God wants to use you to bring reconciliation and peace in that situation. Amen? And he gives you the wisdom how to do it. You may have to execute some judgment, but you're going to look to him. You're not going to go do crazy stuff. Amen? You don't go telling everybody off and stuff like that, <laughs> unless he tells you to. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, this is the area that we're going to really go on in the near future, flowing in this Christ life. But anyway, let me, let me, let me, let me bring this area to a close. Last point. The promises. The promises. Turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter. Chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, according as his divine power had given unto us. 
Is that past tense? Mm -hmm. Had given unto us all, say all, all, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. All things that pertain unto the life, the life that you are now born again to. Everything that pertains to that life that you were born again to has been given to you. And godliness. And everything that is God-likeness that you are designed to manifest has been given to you. Through the knowledge of Him that had called us to glory and virtue. And that word glory, who has called us to glory, to an unveiling and an unfolding of this nature and of the very essence of his being and virtue the nature that is within itself so god has given you any everything that pertains to this newborn again life that you that, that you're born to and to be able to manifest his god life he's given it to you says so done therefore then because of that he has given unto us exceeding great promises. The promises are not adding anything. You got everything already. The promises is not to give you something that you don't already have. He has given unto you exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. So that by these promises you can literally identify various aspects of what you have. Various aspects of that divine nature. Are you with me? So it means then that these promises are literally unveiling the nature of Christ and the life that is in you. Do you get that? Amen? So when you see a promise, ha, huh, that's what's on the inside of me. That's what I got. Amen? He has given you all the promise then unveils that nature of Christ and there's various aspects of that nature of Christ and this nature is unveiled for the purpose that it might be fulfilled through you. It's not because you don't have it. This is not for you to believe to get it. You already got it. But it is to draw it out. It is to identify it. It is so that you know exactly what it is. You know what, that, what, what makes up that life. You got to know what it's made up of before you can function in it. It is the means by which you are able to draw that nature out. There are what, no, oh, I, was, oh, I think I was saying this, that it's not what you believe, believe in God for, but in fact, it reveals what you have. There's a difference. And the promises are also functional. The promises are also tells you something about how that particular nature inside of you is to work. So he's given us great and precious promises. And the Bible says that in him, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, read from 17 to verse 20, but verse 20, that in him, in Christ, all the promises are yes and amen. But of course... Think about it. In him, the promises are identifying everything that is in him. Of course it's yes and amen in him. It is a certainty. It is absolutely certain. It's in him. How can it not be? Hello? Can you see that? Amen? So he's given us these promises that we can identify the, the divine nature that we are partakers of. And that's why you're going to see some, some, that's why you, when you see the promise, then you realize, oh man, this is above and beyond what I could ever ask or think. Amen? Hallelujah. So, we got to wrap this up. So let's summarize it this way. You're righteous. <laughs> Say, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. I'm righteous. Amen. God wants you to have his life. And for him to flow through you. Amen? Now what happens is this. And, and this is where we've been. And we're pretty well at the end of this series. For this dispensation. <laughs> anyway. God wants you to flow in that life. God wants that life to flow through you. His life. 
and you are righteous, and he wants it to come to the outside. So, there is eight applications of the sacrifice of Christ. And by his death and burial, what did he do? He put an end to you, get you out of the way. And by his resurrection and ascension, he's given you a brand new beginning. Say a new beginning. A new life. Now, this new life that you have, by means of the blood, his name, that very life and the promises, he enables you to function in that life. Watch this here. You're righteous. And the blood and the name and the, and, and the life and the promises, they are all enabling you to function in a life, but we can put it this way, by, by enabling you to function in righteousness. Amen? Your spirit is life because of righteousness. I function in righteousness. Here comes the life being manifested. Now you see the blood, there's that four aspect of righteousness. Number one, right standing. Freedom from insecurity, from, from, from oppression, freedom from guilt and from shame, being totally forgiven. The blood has provided that. The blood will establish you in that right standing, that aspect of righteousness. The righteousness also has to do with authority. The name will establish you in the authority of that righteousness, which is the scepter of his kingdom. The life, righteousness is also oneness with him, is it not? The life, the essence of the life is that it's not you, but it's him. It's his life. It's oneness. It's the oneness. It's no longer I, but it's Christ that lived in me. It's now his life. And the promises, the promises, part of the righteousness again is what? What are my rights? What are my privileges? What belongs to me? The promises declares that. So here you have the first four aspects of the sacrifice of Christ putting an end to you and by resurrection and ascension giving you the life of Christ and then the last four causing you to become established in righteousness, established in that place with right standing with God, freedom from guilt, insecurity, fear, being totally forgiven, established in this authority of the name of Jesus, established with that oneness by that life and having the very promises of God that declares all of these blessings, all of these are yours. You are blessed with every spiritual blessing. They're all yes. They're all amen. It all belongs to you. All things are yours. When he give you Jesus, he also freely give you, say, all things. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Glory to God! Hallelujah! Now we have one more place to go next week and you don't need to want to miss that. Amen? Amen. And pray for me too because it's something the Lord spoke to me and I got to do it. <laughs> Amen? Amen? God speaks to you but then you got to do it. You know, that's, you know. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the name. We thank you for the great and precious promises. We thank you for your life in us. And we thank you for the, for the fate of your operation that has brought it all about. So that here we are. We are a new creation. We are your perfect workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And here we are, released by your spirit, by your anointing, to go change the world by letting your life flow. So, Father, we have expectation. We have got expectation that Jesus' enemies will be made his footstool. This kingdom shall be expanded. And men and women will come to their destiny of resurrection life. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your spirit. We release your anointing. We release the reign of your kingdom in this place over our lives, over those in the live stream. In Jesus' name, amen.